Now then, brothers and sisters, welcome back to Food Busker. This week, I've got you such a treat. And if you haven't already, give us a subscribe to the channel. Right, brothers and sisters, the chef that we're going to see today is legitimately in the top two chefs here in the UK. His restaurant was voted number one in the Good Food Guide, which has been around for eons and is just very well regarded. For me, he's the chef in the UK that just nails fish. He is just at the top of his game. He's a chef from Cornwall, which has given us some amazing chefs, including Rick Stein, big TV chef in the UK, which he worked for. His food is insane. Like, just have a look at his Instagram, check it out. But the thing that really sets this chef aside from everyone else is the way that he honors ingredients, the way he takes an ingredient and he just exemplifies its taste in the dishes that he creates, both in the colors that he brings out, but most obviously, importantly, the flavor. He's a culinary Jedi. He would be Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, yeah, I got a problem. The first restaurant I had was a restaurant called The Black Pig, um, and that was in 2003. And it was, I was literally, I was on my own in the kitchen with KP, who usually was a surfer, so if the surfer was good, then he wouldn't be there washing the <laughs> in the so. Standard Cornwall yeah. operating procedure. Definitely, yeah, yeah. So he was always there in the winter when it's cold, but in the summer I couldn't, couldn't get him. When I was in that situation of being on my own in the kitchen, I was always thinking, well, what can I do? I want to obviously do the best I can, um, and what can I do with the ingredients I've got? So I would always concentrate on the fish or the meat and make sure that they were as best as they possibly could be. And then other than that, it was one pot wonders. It would be like a bit of sauce or a bit of dressing and then a nice garnish in there. And, and so to this day, even from 2003 into what I do now in 2020, it, it's still in my mind, I always think, well, what would I do if I was on my own? So I spend most of the time when we come out with dishes going, what can we take away from it? It's the opposite direction chefs would go. Chefs would be like, right, how do I make this thing so much more? I think that's what I see with your food. You seem to like have the very best ingredients. You must have done so many dodgy deals with suppliers and, and fishermen. I suppose when I was a younger chef, you look up to other big you know, name chefs you know, and you sort of, you're inspired by them. But I think you know, in the last sort of 10 years, it's just all been about what ingredients I can get from certain people, mainly from fishermen. You know, what's growing in the garden, you know, what's available to me, what, you know, what the little old lady down the road's growing and she's giving me a little bit. That sort of thing is what I love and that's what inspires what we do. You develop this amazing network down in Cornwall and then you've been able to bring that up to London. That's got to help all those relationships that you've fostered to bring up those great ingredients. You know, the fish that I'm using today here um, would have been on the market yesterday. It comes up in, in the afternoon. It sometimes gets delivered at night, sometimes it gets delivered first day in the morning. Talk us through today's dish. So today what I'm going to do is my version of fish and chips. This is a hake. Sometimes we do it with turbot, sometimes we do it with gurnards, but I think hake's a really good fish to use. It's a very sustainable fish. Uh, it's probably the most sustainable fish um, out of Cornwall actually. So first I'll take the fish, make sure it's all been gutted, scale it, take all the fins off with uh, scissors. So what I do is, because I want this nice piece here, I just sort of come along where the, the center of the fish is and just cut the belly off there. This bit here, I trim it up. Sometimes it's nice and um, in thick and you can use it for different preparations. We salt it down and make like a brandard or something with that bit. With this part here, you have to be very delicate, but I just skin it off in the tail. And then what I'm looking for is a nice piece of fish that's got equal thickness. So I'm gonna go, that's probably about 110 grams. So a nice piece of hake about that sort of size. So these pieces here, I'd probably use this bit here for something else and then trim it off, probably go for about there. And then you've got your final piece. Problem with this bit here at the end, it's gonna, it's so thin, it's gonna overcook. So that's for your fish pie mix. I put a little bit of lemon zest on it and then a few of the herbs that are in the tartar sauce on the fish before I put it into the batter. We make a, a cider batter, uh, but I use gluten-free self-raising flour for two reasons. One is gluten-free, and we get a lot of gluten-free customers now. The cider, actually, with the bubbles and with the gluten-free flour being self-raising, gives it the aeration and gives you a nice sort of crisp batter. How many apples in that, Jim? 
Tool apple. Tool apple. Tool apple. Tool apple. Natural. Natural. I put that in there and then we add that into the batter. Basically your, your thumb and finger aren't prohibiting the, uh, the batter. We've made a mayonnaise, which is like a mustardy sort of a little bit of vinegary mayonnaise. Then we've got some roasted fish that we've made from all the hake bones. We roast the bones off, a little bit of water in there, and that's it. There's no other aromats, it's just water and fish bones. And then I use that to let the mayonnaise down to get it to a consistency that's uh, sauce consistency. And then we add chopped gherkins, chopped shallots, capers, um, and then the herbs, the tarragon, the parsley, the chervil, and the chives. And that's it, that's the tart sauce. go. Fish and chips, the way I like it. Thanks chef, good on you. When you're doing fish and chips, there's a number of things that you've got to nail. It starts with the fish. So many pieces of fish don't have the flavour. You've got the crunch and you've got the moorishness of the sauce. But what you don't have is enough flavour in the fish and it just becomes this thing that's slightly hot, a bit wet, steamy. And really, it should all be about the fish. And what's a little tip that you guys have got to try when you make your fish and chips is the seasoning onto the fish. He seasons the flour, but then he puts herbs and lemon directly onto the flesh. And then when the batter goes around that and it's put into the hot oil, that heat starts evaporating the moisture within the fish and that creates this fragrant release of herbs and lemon. Like, hello mate. Then the batter's just on point, super crunchy. Like I was faffing about filming this. It took me 10 minutes to eat it and it's still super crunchy. And that's the whole point. Too many batters are soggy or they're falling off. But I think the thing that just is genius and unique to Nathan is taking that essential tartar sauce that you just have to have with your fish and chips and, and letting it down with a, a homemade fish stock. Utter genius. The chips are just like, ah, oh, there's a Lamborghini. Ah, oh, this one's a Ferrari. There's a Porsche in here somewhere. These chips are just amazing crunchy. Oh man, what I love about Nathan is like a down to earth fella, comes from Cornwall, no airs and graces, but his food stays true to his upbringing and where he comes from. You know, Nathan might have two mixing stars, he might have a host of restaurants, it might be in the most exclusive restaurants in the world, but he hasn't forgot where he's come from. I could eat another one. <laughs> If you like this video, please give us a share. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel because I've got some mint chefs coming your way in 2020.